What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Today, we are going to be going over our most anticipated films of 2023. Brian, a lot of stuff is coming out this year. Um, and my list, I'm pretty sure, along with yours, doesn't contain a lot of superhero stuff in it. Um, but let's get to it. Do you want to start off, Brian? With uh, your top 10? Well, first off, you make the comment. Uh, I tend to agree with you. Uh, I, I think on the one hand, you have a DC and Warner Brothers in transition. You kind of have a, some mostly holdover projects that we know are kind of not really going long distance uh for for the for the studio on marvel we're looking for a bounce back year this is you know kind of two years in a row we've generally felt by and large let down relative to the stratospheric highs we were on before yeah so i think that's definitely a factor but i tend to agree with you i think i think the superhero genre for me is in a little bit of you know you got to show me at this point before i kind of just assume that things are going to be awesome i think the way that we did a year ago so why don't you go you, well, you kick us off a number 10 I'm, I'm assuming we're gonna have a lot of overlap so if you you know you kick off number 10 if i have the same movie i'll let you know where i have it on the rankings we can kind of go from there yeah um these are not in any particular order i may have like my i'm really looking forward sort of um enthusiasm for some of these um, but I'm going to start off with the one that we're waiting for in February, which is Ant-Man. Uh, this movie is critical, Brian. And I've been saying this for a minute. This movie is critical. And I was always also thinking like, yes, we're looking forward to Jonathan Manger's uh, performance, but he can't be the one carrying this thing all by himself. The, everything got to fall along with it. I'm sure he's going to be dope, but everybody else got to be good too, or else this is not going to work. Brian, this is the movie we hope that sets the MCU on a course uh, much, much different than what we've been on so far. So this one, I'm very much anticipating to see uh, how this turns out. I'm looking forward to it. There's been a lot of buzz. Can this break a billion dollars? I don't know. It has the, I think it has the legs. Let's see, depending on how good it is, depending on where it leads us. That's my number 10. I have it at number five. Um, it is the highest ranked superhero film that I have on the list. It is the only Marvel project I have on the list. And I think that warrants some discussion. Um, but I totally agree with you. Wow. I think the pressure is, I think the pressure is on. I trust in Jonathan Majors. The little bits we've seen in the trailer, I'm very excited because he's already giving you a very different affect. I think he looks great. Like we're seeing a, the classic Kang costume looks really good. I am nervous given the FX concerns we've had around Marvel in the past year, because this is an incredibly visual effects heavy concept with the quantum realm. And I don't want to see the quantum realm equivalent of Doctor Strange 2 with sort of a lack of imagination inside what should be just a, a full palette for Peyton Reed, who's a veteran, right? So you got veterans everywhere. Peyton Reed's a veteran. Paul Rudd's a veteran. The whole family, the Lang family and the Van Dynes are all Marvel veterans at this point. We expect more. Yeah. And, and this movie, I think, will set the tone for the year ahead i honestly think of this i don't think this movie is going to make a billion i think it's going to nestle it's going to be the highest grossing ant-man film which isn't saying the same but i think it's going to be more in that 700 800 range but i think if it does so with good buzz it will help the box for the marvels for guardians for the other stuff if it is more of thor love and thunder I think, <laughs> I think people i think people are going to tune out especially for the marvels later in the year but we got some good news, Brian, of how long this movie will be. This plays towards a narrative of the possibilities of a billion because of how 
how long this movie is, right? Well, it's not a three hour or two hour and 30 or 40 minute movie. It's a two hour and four minute movie. That means you can get a lot of more shows in there than the Batman yeah. did. Um, and it implies there's now in fairness, Thor was two hours and that was still a mess. Doc Strange it was whack, two. though. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, so shorter yeah. length doesn't guarantee anything, no. but it's in a, we we did have it on our list as a suggestion that they should consistently be at this type of length because I don't think you need more than that to make a good film. So I'm encouraged yeah. to see that they, given this is the third Ant Man film, they didn't bloat it up and say, oh, this should be 225 or 230. So I think I think that that is a positive. I would agree. Um, but not to get it twisted, James Cameron Avatar sits in, that dude sits in a island on his own. Is like. The billion dollars was guaranteed, Brian, with this guy. He's but anyway, he's gonna get two. That that move. See, the the Cameron thing that people need. It's a total aside, but we had it on the list last year. We both had it in our top ten. I've seen the movie. If you see it, pay up for the three D. It's worth it. That part's worth it. Like you shouldn't see it any other way. But this guy's movies never open to records. They just don't go away. <laughs> and that's exactly what's happening again. This yeah, movie yeah. just doesn't drop off like a normal movie. And this is crazy. Huh? It's why two billion is going to happen because it's going down like 20 to 30 percent a weekend, which when most movies would be going down 50 to 70. It's unreal what this guy is able to do to audiences time and time again. Yeah. My number 10, a um, little bit of a nod and a parallel, but. Honestly, if there's one of these movies coming out, I'll never not have it in my top 10. Fast X. Oh, hell no. That didn't even make it on my I know. But like for me, I'm such a sucker for this. I, yeah. I, I This franchise. And there's a little bit, in some ways, there's a little bit, I almost feel like, of like when you look at the, the, the problems that Dwayne Johnson has run into, I, you know, I look at this movie as kind of like a reminder to him of like what he could have been a part of. We got to talk the, about that. And these right. things are never... The, here's the thing. One thing I know about a Fast and Furious movie is I am going to be entertained and I don't have to think for two plus hours. And I am going to see a couple of vehicular set pieces that are outright cool. They're crazy. They don't make any sense. But these guys generally know how to choreograph and give you something just totally off the wall, make you laugh a little bit. You know, the actors are all pretty charismatic. They clearly like being around each other. Um, and I'm, I am more than willing to see this franchise through to the end. So I know this production has had some issues with Justin Lin leaving and Louis Leterrier coming in. But I just think there's such a high floor for this that I, I'm going to have it at number 10. It will be an opening weekend must see for me. This was actually, I believe, if I recall, this was the first movie I went to the theater um, coming out of the pandemic was Fast 9. So. Yeah, a lot of people are, are looking forward to that franchise and see what happens, uh, what the craziness happens in this film. Um, I just, I just can't. <laughs> no, that's fine. I get it. I, I am totally. This is a guilty pleasure for me. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, number nine for me is the Marvels. Brian, I got to see Blue Marvel. I've, okay. We've been hearing that he's going to be in this film, and this is another Brian. Like, this is another movie, Brian that if it doesn't hit it'll only solidify the mistake in numbers for the first movie yes <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh and i don't know what this movie's about really uh i don't really want to get any leaks or any i i, I just want to see this movie i'm trying to avoid any theories about it because there's people just throwing out there we'll talk about that later but uh the marvels is my number nine i gotta see blue marvel i and these are sort of the movies brian um i know i know you don't have this in your list it's pivotal for them to if they can do well with quantum mania the marvels has to continue that momentum and that's a high risk um I have this very much in the prove it to me camp. I think everyone from Brie Larson on down has to prove that this character and this franchise should continue in this universe. I'm curious if this movie is not well received 
and disappoints because there's almost no way this movie is going to top the box office of the first. It's actually, I would, that's a zero, I'll put that, that's a 0% chance. That's like, that first movie had all the momentum leading into Endgame. It basically probably did double the box of what it normally would have because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. So, you know, this movie might drop to like 600 million, 650. So, so my question is, if the movie is not well received and the box office drops off like that, do you think there's a third one of these? Oh, and no. do you think Brie Larson is replaced as the character? Yes. You can already sense for some the fatigue of playing these characters. Not all, but you can have a sense of some of these people, you know, um, got their bag and they want to do other things. I don't think she's going to come back uh, if the movie doesn't do well. And I don't think they'll do a third of these. I, 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 I think with the reboot, we're going to get something different. Yeah, I, th I still get the sense she's not super popular among, like, relatively speaking. Like, if you put her up against, you know, it's not fair, but like Chris Evans or ScarJo or RDJ, I think a lot of Disney fans could do without Brie Larson. Like, life would go on for them. As accomplished an actress as she might be, I just don't get the sense she's ever really connected with the audience yeah. in this way. So that's why I bring it up. And I would also say, like, I... I have like I as you can obviously infer from what I said about Ant-Man previously, I don't have Guardians 3 on this list, even though I know Guardians 3 is going to entertain me. I just had this moment with the holiday special where I just realized I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of good with the Guardian. I am interested to see Rocket. Like I think that's the most the most interesting thing in the trailer, getting some backstory and emotional resolution to his character. But I've just realized that I think I think James Gunn is right to like even if he didn't have the DCU post to wrap up this arc with a third film. And I just am like, if the reviews are great and they probably will be, I probably will find a way to go see it. But this I find for me is not like a opening night. I have to be there on the biggest screen. That's just how I feel about the franchise at this point. I think it's just run its course. Yeah. 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 I mean, like Gu guardians has a lot of things going for it, but that that'll be, that's on my list too. But, but go ahead. You're, you're number nine. Uh, we're staying in the category of guilty pleasures, but I actually have legitimate hopes for this. Transformers, Rise of the Beasts. I tell you what, man. Yeah. I know people have like, and I'm the same. I, I got scarred by the progression of Dark of the Moon and Age of Extinction and Last Night. I mean, these movies got progressively more dreadful. I was always, and I, I generally will ride for Michael Bay and all of his flaws and all of his faults, but... I hated the designs of his version of the Transformers throughout. But when I saw Bumblebee and the scenes on Cybertron and the end of that film, I said, you know what? Transformers are starting to look the way I think Transformers should. And they saw the trailer for Rise of the Beast. I said, these characters are starting to look right. I'm, they're bringing me back. Brian, you said this in one of our shows and something that you were worried about, or concerned about happening um, when we get so many bad movies, the good ones get lost. Bumblebee fell victim to its predecessors. 10,000%. Um, That's yeah. a good movie. That's a good yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, it would yeah, be, yeah. If, you have, if you have kids, like if you haven't seen it because you got tired of trans, go back to it. It's a different tone of Transformers movie. It's the kind of Transformers movie you always wanted. Yeah, and this I'm gonna try to see with my son. Go ahead. Yeah, this yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. I just say like you see the way Prime looks now, and you're like, that's the way he always should have looked. And like the beasts look pretty good. I was like, that idea seems so ridiculous to me. And then I saw the yeah. trailer, and I was like, they look pretty good. Like I. I don't know. I'm a sucker for it. I'm in. I have it at yeah. number nine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have it on my list, although I am looking forward to seeing that one, Brian. Uh, and I think it wasn't, it wasn't on my list because there's not a lot of people talking about it. I don't, I don't no. feel the anticipation. Of it. I agree. Yeah. yeah. It, it has the feel of like a franchise that is dead. And kind of like and forgot. they're trying, yeah. But they're trying. Yeah. All right, let's see, let's see. Um, my number eight is uh, I'm gonna say Guardians. 
Okay. I have it on my I have it higher up on my list, but I'm 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 reassessing. Um uh and again, there's no order, but I just want to get the Marvel stuff out the way. Guardians of the Galaxy. Brian, it looks good. I am interested in seeing Rocket's story. He has been one of the better parts of the sh- of the of the of the film, of the films. I don't know. It looks a little bit different for me. It looks uh more like the original movie. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in seeing what this guy Adam Warlock is going to look like and what he's going to do, true. what is going to be, where it'll end up for, uh, I guess, the next installments of Marvel movies in terms of cosmic stuff. So this is a send off. Um, the ending of this is going to be quite uh, interesting. So. I think because it's the last film uh, for James Gunn and the Guardians of the Galaxy, or this this uh, uh, form of it, um, people are going to want to see his send off and what this movie is going to end up being. Yeah, I I can't disagree with that. I, I I'm admittedly just I am less of a Guardians fan within the Marvel franchise than than I probably should be, um, but I agree with you. It's what it is definitely one of those I feel like if there's some momentum building that one might make a run at a billion dollars don't rule it out because it is the end of a franchise that generally has been in that 800 million dollar range yeah if people get the sense that this is like hey the stakes have been raised and they're going out on a high and this is the and, and you know that contractually james gunn can never do another one of these i think the fans will come out so if the reviews are there and the, and the hype is there like this one i could see challenging a billion dollars yeah my only my and the the other thing about this as well is uh we don't know who's gonna survive this, Brian. That's also fair, you know. So James I know Gunn's, one person who hopes he's gonna die in this. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his statement, man. I yo is like you can tell that he didn't sign up for this. <laughs> no. You know, and it's whose fault? It's James Gunn's fault. Even though he gave him the opportunity, fantastic. He can't knock him for that. But the character, the way it was portrayed, and when you read about who the character is in the comics, again, you go from serious stuff to goofiness, and it just doesn't work. Um. So that was my... Number that was eight. Your eight. So you got okay. Marvel 10, 9, and 8, basically. Interesting. Mm-hmm. You got them, you got them in your top 10, but at the bottom. Okay. Uh my my number eight, a little movie called John Wick 4, chapter four. This is a fr- this is the fine, this is like a fine wine franchise, man. They, they I don't know how Keanu does it. You know, he's kind of approaching with this franchise. He is approaching like Tom Cruise status in terms of his ability to defy father time, but give you these action sequences that are like part martial arts, part dance choreography. The movie, the thing I love about this franchise is it it always knows exactly what it is and what it's supposed to do. It's like, we need to get you to an ultra cool gunfight and we need to do it using some really cool, you know, supporting cast, the world of the continental, the world of assassins, He's going after the high table in this one, which I'm excited to see. This movie can't be good, can't be bad. Um, so John Wick 4, chapter four is my number eight. I didn't have it on my list, although I knew of it that it was coming out this year, Brian. But my only thing is I was watching, I think, the second installment. It's probably just me, Brian. I'm just tired <laughs> of the it's is I, I'm not um, floored as I was with the first one. So I'm just hoping they do some new okay. stuff here and not the same moments. There was there was one sequence in, I think, in that second one where he's hitting this dude and, this, and it just looks, it looks fake, you know? And, um, Interesting. Okay. So, right. yeah, it wasn't on I'm my getting list. I'm a little tired of John Wick. All right. <laughs> yeah. My number seven, totally, now I'm getting into more of the serious fare, totally changing genres. We had a text exchange about this the other day, but I am fascinated. Napoleon. Yes, that's on my list. Ridley Scott, Joaquin Phoenix. And if you just Google a picture of Joaquin Phoenix in costume, you're like, that is Napoleon. 
I cannot wait to see this movie. This is good. I'm I'm assuming Brian. I think Rid- Ridley Scott may or may not um, cast a lot of tall people. Oh, to make Napoleon make look short because Joaquin's short, yeah. not super duper short by Hollywood. Nah, he's not. Nah, yeah. he's not super duper short. I'm looking forward to Joaquin's performance because you yeah, can because that dude is amazing. And this is a really interesting historical figure. Really, Scott, you think about Gladiator, which amazingly is finally getting a sequel. But really, Scott, when he does <laughs> historical, whether it's Gladiator, Kingdom of Heaven, even parts of Robin Hood, which is kind of a weird movie, it just looks it it looks amazing. It looks expensive. Yeah. He state obviously this is a period we're going to have some grand battle scenes between the French and the British. I assume Waterloo might be a part of this. I I, I can't wait. I think it's just right in the wheelhouse of both of these people they haven't worked together since gladiator incidentally that which was over 20 years ago and as we know commodus wound up being a pretty memorable character for a much younger joaquin phoenix so yeah i think this is one that like you have to keep an eye on could be a could be a a really big hit the only bummer to this movie pablo is it's going to apple plus so i I, this has the feel of a big screen epic but i know right limited to streaming Apple got the bucks to make up for all yeah. the box office. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> That's all it takes. Um, Sp- my next one is Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Brian, this is one of the okay. most anticipated ones uh, because of how good the first one. The the first one was just quite simply a classic Spider Man film, um, and it's always a difficult task to outdo what some consider a fantastic and great film. How can you add to those adjectives to your next film, right? So we've seen some, uh, I think we I saw we saw a trailer, right? Yes, Across the Spider-Verse. It's, it's a teaser. We, it was yes, a, okay. We mm-hmm. saw almost nothing of the, other than just the magnitude Millions. of Spider-Man <laughs> that Spider-Man. we're going to see, <laughs> Spider-People we're going to see in this one. Like you said, if you wanted Spider-Man, you don't get enough Spider-Man, you're going to get enough Spider-Man in this film. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure, Brian, a lot of people are anticipating this film. And uh, yeah, it's my number seven. That's a good call. One thing that, that actually stood out to me in the trailer that I was a little surprised by was most of the time when you do animated films, the characters never age. And it was interesting. Miles, they, they are aging the character. Like Miles is a little bit old. Like if you look at that scene where he's sitting kind of looking out, He's Mm -hmm. a little bit older than he was in the first film. So that's an interesting choice, which kind of caught me off guard um, that this across the Spider-Verse, you're actually not, you're not going to see like Miles Morales weeks after the first is a couple years later. So it is interesting. I think it's also, you know, at the time the animation was really like fun looking, like it it had a different feel and vibe to it. So I'm kind of curious to see if they bring anything new visually to the table the way they did uh, five, five years ago now. So that's a good call. I didn't have it on my list, but it definitely would be an honorable mention for me. My number six, and I gave, I will say I gave serious thought to putting this higher. So if you recall, I I already said Ant-Man three is at number five. That was my only Marvel superhero film. I do have a DC project and it is blue beetle. I have Blue Beetle at six. I am all in on the Jolo Maradona era. Um, You know, if you haven't seen him on Cobra Kai, do yourself a favor and check him out. I think he looks great and the costume looks good. I also am feeling a little emboldened after James Gunn basically said, we're starting the DCU after this year. Oh, wait, one change. I'm taking Blue Beetle and calling it part of my universe. I guess I felt like, hey, man, that's a plus one for that project. So, but I can't, I think this could be, this is the kind of project to me that the superhero genre could use. It's smaller scale, smaller stakes, but if you have a charismatic lead with an interesting story and characters, I think this could be a smaller budget, but really successful start of something. So I'm pretty yeah. hot with you. They realize, and the people behind this realize that this is an opportunity um, to put Latinos on the map in regards to the superhero. I mean, we did it with Shang-Chi, we did it with Black Panther. Now we're doing, I mean, we did someone with Tinoch, but this one is a little bit different. Um, And you're doing it with a young star who is very popular with that demographic 
I think they realize they have a star in the making with this gentleman. And it has a great cast. Again, I think the people behind this realize that this is an opportunity and I think they're gonna uh give us a fantastic film. I think this is one of, this is gonna be one of the sleepers. It could be. I agree. Now he's not playing a character anywhere near the profile of Spider-Man, but I think the Tom Holland analogy as an actor applies in the sense of when this guy is on screen in Cobra Kai, you don't look away. He is yeah. far and away, I think, the best of the younger cast in that series and has been since the first season. He's matured. He's grown up as a kid. So I can't wait to see what he does with this character. And that's why I said I think it could launch him into other things. I don't think you're going to just see him in this genre. But uh, yeah, this could so. be like one of his calling card characters if they get it right. So I am super excited to see it. Uh, and I, I just like the idea of something that is that is different. It's fresh. It's away from the mess, if you will, of DC's other stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty high on that. So that was, that was my number six. And like I said, I already had, I already told you Ant-Man three was my number five. So what have, mm -hmm. what have you got kind of in the five, six? Super Mario brothers. No way. <laughs> <laughs> that wow. joint look dope. Wow. <laughs> that joint look dope. I think <laughs> it's going to be hilarious, Brian. I think this movie is going to be hilarious. Oh I can't goodness. wait for this movie. Wow. This is like, are you kidding me, Super Mario Brothers? This is a game that we grew up with, Brian. And to, and to see it this way, told in a, in a visually uh, pleasing way, reminiscent of what we used to play or what we could think of in terms of animation, I think the, the, the nostalgia is going to hit Wow. The jokes are going to hit. All that stuff is going to be amazing. I think this movie is going to do gangbusters at the box office. Interesting. See, I've been... So you're answering maybe the question. I, I've been wondering who this movie is really aimed at because I feel like for the kids today, I feel like Mario's been surpassed as like a platform gaming character by a lot of other options that are out there. You know, Minecraft, Roblox, like Mar the Mario world. Now... My kid, like, you know, on Switch loves the Yoshi game, the Yoshi's Crafted World. You got Mario Odyssey, that sort of thing. But, like, I just don't think it's – you're right. Like, the Mario franchise was top of list, top of mind when we were kids. And so – but it, it's animated. So I'm like, is it meant for us or is it meant for – so that's it's interesting that us. you're like – yes, yeah, so you're, you're interested. You, you take it as, like, it's aimed at grownups and to bring back the feeling of the 80s and the 90s. Interesting. It's going to bring back all those – um trick uh things the the one-ups all that stuff is gonna bring it in there and it's gonna be just hilarious to see and be like oh snap it's gonna be yo adults are gonna take their kids even if the kids don't know that, that where we're going we're going to be super, super married brothers every the, they're bringing and then their the kids, kids gonna want to play the game after more money more money more money <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, you, if that thing if that thing does go ballistic, that's going to be a great call by you because I do feel like there's a lot of skepticism given that this like now in fairness, Sonic worked as a franchise. Sonic the Hedgehog has been successful, but I do think this is a whole other challenge in the sense of like Sonic was an a CGI character in a live action, a live -action world. Movie, this yeah. is a world meant to look like the game, the 3D version of the game. So. I, I tell you what, this makes a run of like 800 million, 900 million. That's going to be your best call of the year. I think, so. <laughs> what wow. you got? Uh, well, I, I had Ant Man 3 number five. So, my number four, going to the complete other end of the spectrum in terms of genre and awards fair, Oppenheimer. Um, I have that up there too. We can talk about I that. Yep. For Christopher Nolan to the end of time. The trailer it looks interesting. The. First off, the other thing with the trailer to me that's funny is like other than Killian Murphy, who basically is in every shot, read the cast list for this movie. Like, obviously, all these people are doing like one or two scenes that took a discount. Because if you paid the full rate for this cast, this movie will cost you like one hundred billion dollars. But it's the most incredible cast list you're ever going to see. It's like anyone who's anyone <laughs> in Hollywood is in this movie. And Christopher Nolan doing a biopic is a new genre for him. This is a really interesting individual at a really interesting time in history. And ironically, Oppenheimer is mentioned. If you go back to Tenet, the, 
the idea of Oppenheimer is mentioned alongside that sort of time traveling weapon that they're hunting in the, in that film. And I wonder if it was the launch pad for this uh, this this idea. But anything Chris Nolan makes, I'm going to be excited for. But this feels very different. And so I'm just curious. I mean, I, I'm just I'm just fascinated to see what he comes up with for this. So Oppenheimer, number four. I'm fascinated in seeing these people uh, in, on the same screen talking to each other, what they're going to say and how they're going to perform. I'm looking forward to seeing those performances because, you again, you have an all-star cast. Robert Downey Jr. is in there. Uh, Kenny Murphy. Who else is in this? Emily Blunt is in this. Um, I mean, who's not in this? I mean, my, my, of course, Michael Caine makes it back in. But th- just do yourself a favor and pull up the list because it has like a hundred people you know, no. like who have starred in movies, who are taking you know, I'm assuming one or two days work to do be part yeah. of. It. Yeah. Uh, my number three, Mission Impossible. Fallout for me is one of the best action movies. In like 15, 20 years, you Holy can't God. top that movie in terms of action film. And Tom Cruise keep and he's hot. I mean, the dude is never not hot, you know, um, but the momentum that he went into with Top Gun and now all the stunts that he's pulled off in trying to get people excited for this film Um He's going to just take it up another notch, and uh, uh, and I and people are looking forward to seeing that. Well, so if you ever, so I know one of the one of the most the longest running jokes in the superhero genre is Tom Cruise as Iron Man because he was offered the part a long time ago and passed. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree, but I don't know that stunt that he does with the motorcycle. That's about as close as you get to see him playing Iron Man because yeah. he's fly. I, he just he flies off a cliff. Like, where's he going? Like, if you watch the behind the scenes for that stunt, it's it's just like there's something wrong with this guy. Like, in a very like entertaining way for us on our behalf. But mm-hmm. I'll, I'll save my comments because I have it a bit higher. But I here's here's the thing I would say when you take the combination of the Chris McQuarrie run in this franchise, which is Rogue Nation to fall out to now this and then you layer in top gun i don't know how this is not in anyone's top three yeah. like how is it not i mean at this point like you got quality franchise and Cruz is now um, against all odds is his heat is back as a as a frontline actor like yeah i think it has to be considered one of the safest bets to be a crowd pleasing blockbuster for the summer so yeah no i i, I understand you'd have in the top three um speaking of old okay. star Again, oh, go ahead. Like, like like these aren't in any specific order um but these are just the ones that i think that people are most anticipating and i myself am looking forward to seeing it and curious about seeing it as well sticking with old stars going back to the well one more time ah they got me indiana jones five Ah, goodness. I can't, man. I, <laughs> like, I didn't want to. I didn't believe in it. And then I watched the trailer, and I'm like, James Mangold, man, that looks really in the spirit of the Indiana Jones that I love, which is Raiders and Last Crusade. Uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge very wisely has not overplayed her hand since Fleabag was huge, but I think she's a perfect addition to that type of franchise. Harrison Ford is guaranteeing this is the last one, and he's not going out the way he did in Crystal Skull, so... I couldn't help it. I was like, I, I at, deep in my core, I am super excited to see this movie and super excited to see this adventure and this character on screen, on the big screen one more time. So Indiana Jones mm-hmm. 5 was my number three. I, I I saw it and I thought about it and, it, and it's for me, it just doesn't. Uh, I've been let down from for, 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 for of the other films. I've tried to watch the other films. It just hasn't brought back that Raiders of the Lost Dark Temple of Doom type feeling. Um, and so I know this is his last, I know they're doing a bit of time traveling in this, Brian. Well, yeah, there's like de-aged Harrison Ford scenes and then yeah, dial of destiny would seemingly indicate there's something temporal involved. So it sounds like we're spending some time in the late sixties, which is an, that's a good choice. I think for Indiana Jones. Um, and then we're going back and I think the, the good old Nazis might be involved one more time in some capacity <laughs> here. 
uh, the favorite the favorite villain of of this franchise so yeah okay um my next one brian is uh <clears throat> the flash and i'll tell you why brian okay this movie is perhaps one of the most talked about films not because of the film itself but because of what's going on with the lead and the curiosity that a lot of us have with regards to how people are going to receive this film despite the positive reviews that may be attached to it so it's a very fascinating situation to witness i myself brian i said i wasn't going to watch it i'm going to watch it brian because at the end of the day, it's not about. I'm not going to watch it for Ezra Miller. I'm going to watch it for the other uh, things that they do with this film, and I'm hoping that at the end of the movie that it 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 does what it's what I think it will do, and is reboot. So I looked at this initially. I had it in the rankings lower, and then I kind of just decided, you know, to the. Given all, I mean, and granted, it's not all proven, but given all the noise around Ezra Miller, I just couldn't put it on the list. So I gave it an asterisk. If we're being objective about anti pure anticipation, yes, I think it would be in, in your top 10. The, the test screening comparisons we are hearing, there's two movies that come up in, that in terms of the level of quality. Spider-Man No Way Home and The mm -hmm. Dark Knight. That's, that's I mean, crazy. that's insane. Okay. <laughs> but that's what they're saying. Yeah. Which basically means since both those movies on Rotten Tomatoes were like 97% fresh and the scores were high, is that means you're going to have almost every review be apologetic because they're going to be like, this movie's so awesome, but, yeah. I, you know, I don't condone this, that, and the other thing. I would find it highly ironic if this turns out to be a huge hit when they've just wiped the slate clean with all the other Snyderverse characters and it's Ezra Miller's lead project is the one that actually delivers huge box. That would be pretty, that'd be an odd twist of fate, especially when I don't believe for a second this thing that's going around about Warner Brothers being open to continuing with him. Let me translate for that. Let me let me translate that for people. Let, you guys step back. This is an individual that couldn't go 10 days without being in the police blotter for a series of incidents, any one of which would be serious, serious stuff. Yeah. You have a studio desperate to salvage a 200 plus million dollar project. They've gotten this individual to go to some form of counseling and lay low finally for the last couple of months. Do you honestly think the executives would sit around and publicly say, we're firing this dude after this movie? <laughs> what do you think would happen if you did that? <laughs> they need this dude to stay on the wagon until next June. They have no intention of continuing with him. It's complete BS what's out there, but it's out there to make keep the peace. Yeah. That's what's going on. I can't I just can't get behind it, but I agree with you. It is very anticipated. I will say this. Michael Keaton had his whatever plans they had for him have just been shuttered. But this yeah. will be the one chance you have to see him as Batman again. And we've heard rumors that Christopher Reeve will be resurrected in this movie. Now, I would think with all the cameos that have been cut, that one probably will survive. And I don't know, is there maybe room for a scene where Michael Keaton and Christopher Reeve are face to face one time? That would be pretty wild if that yeah. happened. Ah, oh, man. Christopher Reeve. Let's see. But there's a lot of there's a lot of anticipation for this film, Brian. Couldn't put it on the list, but it's an asterisk. I agree with you. So yeah. I, I don't blame you for having it super duper high. It probably belongs there. My number two is a part two. Dune. Yeah, that's my number one. Yeah. 
part two. If there's a movie to me that got short shifted by the pandemic and the day and date strategy that Warner Brothers used, it's this movie. Oh, yeah. Because this movie should have been held for the big screen only. It is visually stunning. The story is compelling. The cast is amazing. And I cannot wait to see how Denny Villeneuve brings this one home. I, the fact that he even got this far with a book that's this hard to adapt. Yeah. I cannot wait to see the end of this. I think it's going to be epic. I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's got a shot at a lot of awards nominations. That first one got like 10, 11 nominations. I would not be shocked if this one is nominated for Best Picture and you see even a win or two, depending on uh, how it plays. I think this movie is going to be spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Doom, Doom Part 2, man. Uh, the first one, whoever saw this film saw... We're just in awe, was in awe of it. Uh, and who else is going to be in this film? I think, is, isn't Harry Styles supposed to be in this film? I believe he is. Uh, there are several other major cast members who are being added. Uh, Florence Pugh, I believe, has a major part in this film, which, as we know now, that's a big freaking deal. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, Brian. Yeah. There's a lot of names in this film. And because of how good the word of mouth was for Dune Part 1 and how visually stunning it was, and people heard of it, I'm pretty sure people, a lot of people saw it. They're going to go, they're going to want to go see this in the theaters when it comes out. I expect a lot from this, this movie at the box office. I hope they re-release Part 1 in the theater right before they put Part 2 out. I think they would do well I, to do that. I, I agree with you. That would be a smart thing to do, I think. Also, I feel like the way the story is structured, you know, the first one is the one you kind of have to get through because that's the exposition. That's the setup of kind of the political structure of this galaxy. Second one's where he's supposed he's got to turn it loose. So actually, this could be much more sort of a, a, a almost like a martial war epic, but still with, you know, you know, like Chalamet. This will be the closest you get to seeing him do superhero something stuff. in superhero star wars like this is it this is the this is the franchise character he he's doing so is this their empire strike back yeah kind of, i mean I, I, and the thing is like you know there's no there's no there's no part three like this this is this is it denny's not, not the kind of director who's going to come back and do like six of these so like everyone's finishing and wrapping up the story they want to tell um, but I just think you are going to see something visually memorable. Like, you know, uh, think back to like Lord of the Rings when that first came out and like yeah. when you first thought of it, that's, that's the parallel. So I think it's a huge event, uh, for this year with, with, uh, as you say, I think a lot of box off, it's going to be long. So I don't know if a, I don't know. I, I was going to say not a billion, but like, if it really rips, maybe, maybe it can kind of have that like James Cameron type legs and, and get there. So your number one is Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible, man. Like, if you want to me, if you want to see the box office effect of another film, like one film on another, it's this movie. So the Fallout broke the record for the franchise. It's about just a shade under eight hundred million. I think this is going over a billion with ease, with ease. After Top Gun Maverick, I don't think people can wait to see. I think in a weird way, what Top Gun Maverick did was it probably brought a whole new level of appreciation for what's been going on in the Mission Impossible franchise for people who weren't aware of it over the last 10 years. And now people are salivating to see Dead Reckoning Part 1. Um, and you just, I think the way they're promoting this has been brilliant. Like Tom Cruise doing these insane commercials where he's like sitting on the wing of a biplane and then just like floating off into in like some kind of random parachute jump. Like, I think people are all in. I think they're feeling warm and fuzzy about him again in a way they haven't since he probably was jumping on Oprah's couch 15, 16 mm -hmm. years ago. I think this movie is going to be a crowd pleaser. I think it's going to be awesome. And yeah, I think it's north of a billion. That's a lock for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with you on Fallout. I love Rogue Nation. I love Ghost Protocol. I watch those movies over and over and over and over. Like if I'm on an airplane <laughs> and those are available, I always watch one of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> it'll make time fly by that's right <laughs> <laughs> um yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of of our list are you anticipating uh some of these yeah. movies let us know what wasn't on the list yeah so can i just like rapid fire movies that i didn't that i i just listed because some of them i never even thought about but i just want to spend a second on them because 
Aquaman 2. Ah. Zero. Net did didn't even like was not even a moment's consideration. <laughs> nope. Zero. And now nope. we know it's the end of that whole universe. So, you know. Robert Meyer Burnett wanted to make a bet with John Campion that Aquaman would make a billion dollars. A thousand Aquaman two? Aquaman two. Oh, I went against that all day. I was trying to bet. I was trying to go on the show and 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 super <laughs> chat him and like, hey, I'll take that bet. But I think only the members now can can comment um, on, or ask questions. But whatever. But I'll now, take that bet. Yeah, no doubt. Also in the genre, no consideration. I have no interest. If either of these is any good, I will be shocked. Craven the Hunter, Madam. Uh, Rose. Yes, I saw that too. I was like, no way. Who? I don't know, Brian. This is an, uh, 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 another. Who knows, Brian? If we're waiting for Craven the Hunter to come out before we get a green light for James Bond, I don't know. Well, if I was if I was his agent, I would lock down that role before <laughs> Craven comes out. Because if that movie pulls a Morbius, the Broccoli family might be like, uh, ah, that's what I'm saying. That's man. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, Craven the Hunter, man. I, I saw it. I'm like, no way. Nobody waiting for this. Nobody. No. That that's one that like, if the reviews are amazing, okay, maybe. But I don't see any. There's nothing in Sony's track record on its own that says that's going to be the case so yeah. i'm not there for either of those something that got consideration and i'm interested to see it but it wasn't quite in the top 10 for me creed 3 yeah it, i think it's it, it, i it's saw that be, too yeah right it's like now here's the thing if you knew damien was damien lang would creed 3 have made your list Hells yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't. It's something else. But it's the one thing I will say that you know, Michael B. Jordan, first time director, he's directing a sports movie using IMAX cameras. That might be worth checking out. That's never been done before for that type of genre. It's an interesting concept. So I will probably be there at an IMAX screen to see this movie. But I agree with you that. Oh, I wish they could have found one more way to one more round with Sylvester Stallone as the trainer and the legacy of Clubber Lang. As... I wanted, I wanted to see Mr. T and and Stallone talk. Ah, Dang, one more I, time. It's like, yo, what are you guys thinking when you think about this, man? Clubber Lang after Rocky Three was that's it, he disappeared. Y'all killed Apollo Creed. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan's films that last one wasn't really that great um the 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 uh tom clancy one oh without remorse was very disappointing yeah, yeah. so it puts in my mind the question of whether he's looking at scripts and deciding for himself oh this is a dope script let me do it and I, I, him directing it is gonna be a very huge test brian yeah i agree so let's it's a big see. bet on himself. I mean, yes. here's the reality: like, if we're being if we're being honest, and I I think Michael B. Jordan's a you know he's had an awesome career, but Michael B. Jordan, there's Michael B. Jordan with Ryan Coogler, and there's Michael B. Jordan without. Michael B. Jordan with Ryan Coogler, automatic. Fruitville Station, Creed, Black Panther. But he's Michael essentially Jordan, playing almost the same guy, though. But I get it. But I'm saying that partnership has been box office gold and has gotten him onto the A list. He yeah, is, yeah. But without remorse was a good example of Michael B. Jordan without Ryan Coogler, not necessarily That's bankable movie star yet. And he's betting on himself two ways. This is this is the Rocky franchise come to life. He really is Sylvester Stallone now in this. He's directing. He's you know, helping write, and he's the star. This is what Stallone became. Yeah. And people forget, like, you see Rocky Three and Rocky Four on TNT. Those movies were hits, people. Go back to the box office in mm. $1980. When Sty Stallone was putting out Rambo Two and Rocky Four in the same back half of the same year, and those are two yeah. of the three highest grossing movies of that year. Yeah. I know you watch it now, you don't think that. But that's what audience He was killing them. He was killing so them. That's the bar. 
that's the bar when you go do this. But anyway, yeah. I think it'll be interesting. I think Majors looks awesome as a character, but I agree. He would have looked more awesome if we knew it was, was Lang. Lang. Yeah. The only other ones I had just just for like consumption to have on your list. Um, Equalizer 3. Ah. I love Denzel. I love Denzel kicking butt, man. Man on Fire, Equalizer franchise, and he's reuniting with, speaking of Man on Fire, reuniting with Dakota Fanning in this movie, which I think is interesting. Interesting. I don't know. Right? Yeah, it's not a top 10. It's just, I think it'll be worth worth your 15, 20 bucks for, for a couple of hours. Movie that did not does not have my interest. Dungeons and Dragons. I'm I'm so oh. done with them trying to adapt this. That thing looks terrible, man. Chris Pine, stay away from these types of movies. Why? The money was right. <laughs> That's so yeah, no doubt. But it's like yeah. it's just the tone looks weird. I don't know. The only other movie this is this one I had no, heard nothing about. It came out. It hit my feed for a teaser, and I'm like moderately intrigued. It's a small. It's a small sci-fi movie called Sixty Five. I don't know if you've seen the trailer. Adam Driver. Adam Driver being hunted by dinosaurs, dinosaurs on some sort of future Earth, and I was like, "Yeah, this past, might work." Is it future or past Earth? Oh, it might be. Maybe it is past Earth. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, it is yeah, past yeah, Earth. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's a futuristic astronaut, but he crashes somehow in the past. But I don't know. It had this little, I don't know, like predator feel to it. Like I don't know. It just was like, eh, I'm kind of interested. Never heard of this. He look. He moves like John Wick. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> when I was watching right. the movie, I'm like, wow, that looks like John Wick. But uh, anyway. yeah, I, I saw the trailer um, and it looks very interesting, but I, I'm sort of not like not into dinosaurs. That's anymore. a small. Yeah, that's not. A, yeah. yeah, that's not a yeah, top 10 movie. Uh, but there's there's other films out there, Brian, that I'm pretty sure that we'll talk about throughout the year that 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 look interesting. Um but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what movies are you guys most anticipating this year? We we named a lot. Let us know in the comment section which we which ones we didn't mention that caught your attention. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on the Nerdgen Report.